Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice homemade Diophantine equation. In other words, we're going to be solving for integers. We have 3 to the power x plus y minus 3 to the power x equals 78. So we're going to go ahead and go through the solution, which is fairly easy. And then I'm going to show you a different version of this problem and we'll talk about a couple things. All right, so let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems. There was a competition problem that was from Russian Math Olympiads many years ago. I can't remember exactly, but that did contain uh, some number like 1984 maybe. It was that. Anyways, so here's the idea. X and Y are integers, and we're going to be solving for all values of X and Y. Something interesting about Diophantine equations, equations with integer solutions, is that you usually have fewer equations than the number of variables. In this case, we have two variables, but only one equation, and it can be solved. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor this expression. First of all, 3 to the power x plus y can be written as 3 to the x times 3 to the y. And if you write it that way, 3 to the x times 3 to the y minus 3 to the x, 3 to the x becomes a common factor, so we can factor it out. If when we do, we get 3 to the y minus 1 equals 78. Now, number theory deals with different equations, and they use algebra tools most of the time, especially the divisibility criteria. Divisibility basically means that this product needs to be equal to 78, so each factor, or at least one of the factors, must divide 78. If you look at factors of 78, you're going to have an idea, but here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and take a look at what 3 to the x can be, because 3 to the x is a power of 3, so it can't be any ordinary number. So let's go ahead and do the prime factorization of 78. 78 is 2 times 39, and as you know, that can be written as 2 times 3 times 13. So it's a product of three prime numbers. Great. And if you look at these prime numbers, the only prime that's a power of 3 is 3. So this number must equal 3. Make sense? And of course, this has to be the rest, which is 26, because their product is supposed to be 78. And that also works, because if 3 to the y minus 1 is 26, this implies 3 to the y is 27. And from here, we get an integer solution. Yay! Awesome. So from here, we get y equals 3. What about x? Well, if 3 to the x is equal to 3, then x is equal to 1. Therefore, 1 comma 3 is a solution. Is that the only solution? The answer is yes. It can't be negative 3 because it's not a power of 3. We're not dealing with complex numbers here. That's a different story. You know, if we had an equation like 3 to the x equals negative 3, we would find complex solutions, but not in the real world. So, let's keep it real. And if you multiply 3 by any of these numbers or a combination of them, then the result is not going to be a power of 3. So the power of 3 can only come from the prime number 3 itself. Make sense? Because we don't have any powers of 3 here besides the 3. If we had 3 to the third power in the product, that would be a different story. Make sense? Okay. That's why prime factorization is super duper important. So from here, is that it? Case closed? Easy, right? Well, here's the thing. I want to open up a window here, or a tab, and pose this question. What happens if we are given 3 to the power x plus y minus 3 to the power x equals 1944? Not 1984, pretty close. And don't you think that this would make a nice competition problem in 1944? Were there any competitions back then? Maybe. I mean, I think... IMO started in 1950s, right? Or maybe 1950. And only like eight countries were participating. United States, I don't think it, they participated until 1970s, maybe. Something like that. And there was one year that they didn't do it. Anyways, that's a different story. But there were no IMO, no AME, no AMC in 1944. Maybe some competition in Romania or Russia. I don't know, China. Any of those countries that are really strong in math. Maybe Hungary? Could be. Anyways, 
I just rem remembered there was a book about Miklos Schweitzer math competition, which is like a really nice name, right? Don't you think? Anyways, I digress. So what would happen if you had this? Would you just, I mean, the first problem was easy because you could guess. Come on, 81 minus 3 is 78, right? I mean, hopefully everyone knows that. But this one, uh, we could still do it with some higher powers. But here's the same idea. Take 3 to the x out and then look at 1944. Obviously, 1944 might contain more than one 3. So how do we know? Let's find out. There's a nice way of finding, I don't know what this method is called, but it's used widely um, for finding the prime factorization. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by the smallest possible prime. 2 goes, so it's going to be 972. Divide by 2, 486. It reminded me the 486 computers. Oh, I'm too old. And divide by 2, 243. Now, you can't divide by 2 anymore, so use the 3, 81, use the 3, 27. Uh-oh, that's going to go on for a long time because these are powers of 3, right? And then next one is going to be 9, and then 3, and then finally 1. Awesome. So this kind of gives you the prime factorization, doesn't it? So 1944 can be written as 2 to the 3rd power times 3 to the 5th power. Uh-oh, those are such large numbers. Now... Here is the idea. We could go ahead and write this as 8 times 243. Am I right? And then set these equal to something. What was my factors? 3 to the x and 3 to the y minus 1. So I could say that probably this is at 243, which means x is 5, and this is an 8. But does that work? Well, if 3 to the y is 9, then y is 2, x is 5. So we got a solution. So 5 comma 2 is a solution, right? But is that the only solution? Let's check it out. Instead of using the 243 and the 8, I could just borrow one of the 3s from here and give it to 8. In other words, I could use 81 times 24. 81 works for 3 to the power x, but 24 is not 1 less than a power of 3. So you see, you kind of have to use a little bit of modular arithmetic Keep multiplying 8 by 3 and check if those any of these numbers will be uh, in the next one is going to be 72. And now we're going to have 216 and then 648 and finally 1944. But unfortunately, none of these will be equal to 3 to the y minus 1. Therefore, 5 comma 2 is going to be the only solution to this equation. Again. If you were in 1944, oh man, those were the days, then 5 comma 2 would be a nice solution, and I think this would make a really nice problem those years. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.